China revives a 600-meter abandoned super tower. After a decade, can you imagine, in a city of over 10 million, a tower nearly 600 meters tall, twice the height of the Shard in London, surpassing One World Trade Center in New York, standing proudly for over a decade, but completely empty? No lights, no offices, no luxury apartments. Just a colossal steel skeleton, abandoned like an unused skyscraper. It's called Golden Finance 117, a structure once envisioned as the new symbol of the Chinese dream, but later became a symbol of unfinished ambition. A project worth over $1 billion, it nearly touched the pinnacle of glory, then crashed spectacularly during the 2015 financial crisis. For 10 years, it stood there, cold, vacant, a silent reminder of ambition and risk. But in April 2025, the world was stunned when China announced the project is back. Once again, a dream thought extinguished, reignites. Join Top 10 Discoveries official as we uncover the unprecedented story behind the world's most infamous abandoned tower. From jaw-dropping technical feats and hidden global dynamics to the biggest question, is this a spectacular revival or a final gamble on a shattered dream? In 2008, amid China's meteoric economic growth and undeniable global rise, a bold ambition took root in Tianjin, China's fourth largest port city. Golden Finance 117 was envisioned not just as China's tallest building, but as a symbol of confidence, technical prowess, and a new role in global finance. The project launched in 2008, when China was basking in the success of the Beijing Olympics, and belief in a Chinese era was soaring. Golden Finance 117 was planned as the centerpiece of the Tianjin Golden Metropolitan Complex, a mega urban hub integrating a financial district, luxury residences, a shopping center, two international polo fields, green spaces, and even a five-star sky hotel. The tower was designed with staggering dimensions, 597 meters, nearly double the Shard's height, with 128 above-ground floors, four basements, and 370,000 square meters of usable space. Only five buildings worldwide are taller, all in Asia. The players behind this megastructure reflected China's boundless ambition during its urban and global boom post-2008 financial crisis. The project's developer was Golden Properties Holdings, led by Hong Kong billionaire Pan Sutong. A prominent figure in Asian finance, he was known for bold, high-stakes investments in real estate, finance, and sports. Choosing Tianjin over Beijing or Shanghai signaled a long-term strategy, transforming a peripheral city into a new financial commercial hub for domestic and global elites. For design, Hong Kong's P&T Group with over 150 years of experience and hundreds of Asian high-rise projects took the lead. They blended modern aesthetics with input from British, American, and Chinese structural engineers to tackle unprecedented challenges of slenderness, wind loads, and seismic risks. Top experts in structural dynamics and seismology joined the advisory board to ensure the super tall could withstand Tianjin's earthquake-prone region. Construction and technical consulting involved a consortium of top international and Chinese firms operating at the scale of a small city. The tower was designed with a height-to-width ratio of 9.5, exceeding China's national seismic code limit, 7.0, requiring extreme engineering solutions. Four 600-meter mega columns, a reinforced steel core to resist torsion, and massive bracing beams acting as dynamic dampers. Aimed to be a new urban icon, Golden Finance 117 was set to house a luxury hotel, Class A offices, high-end retail, and a sky observatory. This wasn't just a technical feat. It was a statement about a modern, monumental future, a global symbol of China's belief that, though not the birthplace of skyscrapers, it could lead the world in architectural excellence. Golden Finance 117 didn't just impress real estate insiders with its height, it stunned global engineers with its boundary-pushing specs. Its observatory, at 578.7 meters, 
outstrips those of any European or American building. Structurally, its 9.5 height to width ratio defied China's seismic code 7.0. To secure permits, engineers delivered true technical breakthroughs, most notably four mega columns at the corners, nearly 600 meters tall, almost the building's full height, linked to a central reinforced steel core via massive braces. These braces act as dynamic dampers, enabling the structure to absorb and dissipate forces during strong seismic events or high winds. This type of design is typically used only in experimental, boundary-pushing towers. But Golden Finance 117 brought it to a commercial scale. The building features 89 elevators, including double-decker models for dual-floor passenger transport and sky lobbies at varying heights. It also targeted LEED Platinum certification, the highest level for energy efficiency and sustainability, rare for super-tall structures. Everything initially went to plan. Construction began in 2008, paused briefly in 2010 due to financial strain, then resumed in 2011, aiming for completion by 2016. By September 2015, the tower was topped out, reaching its full 597-meter architectural height. But months later, disaster struck. On June 12, 2015, China's stock market crashed after a period of overheated growth. Millions of retail investors, many using leveraged financing, triggered a massive sell-off. Over $3 trillion in market value vanished in weeks. The luxury real estate sector, heavily reliant on bank credit, froze. Golden Finance 117, a super tall, high-risk project in suburban Tianjin, was hit hard as banks and investors pulled funding. Construction halted completely by late 2015, from a beacon of architectural pride, Golden Finance 117 became a stalled ambition. By 2020, when China banned buildings over 500 meters, many believed this was the final nail in the coffin. Guinness recognized it as the world's tallest unused building and dubbed by international media as giant broken toy, ghost super tower, and a symbol of overreach. But in April 2025, a shocking twist defied all predictions. Tianjin's government announced the project's revival, granting new construction permits to state-backed BGI engineering consultants, aiming to complete the tower by 2027. From a forgotten relic, Golden Finance 117 re-emerged on global front pages. The question now, can China turn a symbolic failure into a geopolitical and technical triumph? Per the April 2025 announcement, Tianjin's government greenlit the resumption of Golden Finance 117's construction. Notably, the original developer, Golden Properties Holdings, is no longer involved. Instead, the project was handed to BGI Engineering Consultants, a state-owned engineering firm, alongside the original designer, P&T Group, for the completion phase. The newly disclosed investment is approximately $78 million, a surprisingly low figure compared to the original $1.2 plus billion dollar cost. Observers note this likely covers only remaining finishing work as the structure was largely completed by 2015. This underscores the project's feasibility with only interior fit outs, electrical, plumbing, and functional adjustments needed to align with current market demands. While the new usage plan isn't fully detailed, Permit documents suggest ground and lower floors will become commercial corridors with flexible leasing spaces, shifting from the original focus on luxury brands. Upper floors, once slated entirely for Class A offices, may now include co-working spaces, creative studios, or event venues. More adaptable models amid a global office real estate slump. Sources from construction briefing and Newsweek indicate the project is being repositioned as part of a broader plan to restore confidence in China's property market. This aligns with China's strategy since early 2025, reviving unfinished icons to rebuild expectations and stabilize investor sentiment. Choosing Golden Finance 117, a striking yet tarnished symbol, is no accident. It's a bold message. We don't bury failures, we complete them, but challenges still remain. China's 2020 ban on buildings over 500 meters is still in effect. 
The project continues only because it was permitted pre-ban, making it a special case. This limits flexibility. No height adjustments or major functional expansions are possible, as significant changes could trigger another suspension. Commercial viability post-completion is a key question. With nearly 100 floors of office and service space, occupancy rates are critical. Currently, many Chinese high-rises, especially in satellite cities like Tianjin, face vacancy rates above 30%. State support may extend beyond restarting construction, potentially including leasing incentives, tax breaks for tenants, or converting parts for public use like museums, science centers, or exhibition spaces. Finally, branding is under review. The name Golden Finance 117, tied to failure and crisis, may be replaced with one better suited to reframe the nation's image. No official announcement has been made, but observers see this as a key part of a PR campaign to rehabilitate the world's most infamous ghost tower. Clearly, reviving Golden Finance 117 isn't just about finishing a building, it's a deliberate campaign, addressing a decade-old legacy while rebuilding trust in a shaky industry. When China announced the restart of Golden Finance 117 after nearly a decade of abandonment, it wasn't just a construction milestone. It was a strategic statement, a quiet message of perseverance from Tianjin Post Evergrande. Confidence in China's property market has waned. Hundreds of stalled projects, rising undelivered housing rates, and cautious buyers and investors have created a tough climate. In this context, reviving a tower once seen as a symbol of failure carries meaning far beyond construction. It's a declaration. China won't let unfinished icons linger forever. It's no coincidence that the project's now led by BGE Engineering Consultants, a state-owned firm. Analysts, from Newsweek to Construction Briefing, suggest funding likely comes from government-backed financial packages or debt restructuring. Avoiding mention of the original developer, billionaire Pan Sutong and Golden, signals a shift from private failure to state-led completion. Golden Finance 117 is no longer just a high-rise project. It's a strategic symbol, a litmus test for China's ability to revive massive projects, restore expectations, and manage risks in a sector once seen as a debt time bomb. In many ways, it's China's answer to unfinished icons, not due to tragedy, but as a bid to restore national confidence through architecture. If completed by 2027 as planned, it could show China isn't just a factory hub, but a nation that corrects mistakes, turns failures into soft power, and uses icons to shape market sentiment. In a world where skyscrapers are not just workplaces, but statements of influence, completing a 600-meter tower once mocked as the pinnacle of waste is China's action-based response. If successful, it won't just be an architectural win, it'll be a strategic one. The revival of Golden Finance 117 isn't an isolated case. The Chengdu Greenland Tower, another super tall stalled in 2023, also resumed construction in quarter one, 2025. This signals a clear trend. China is paving the way for a wave of super tall revivals, despite recently enforcing strict bans. In 2020, China imposed a stringent ban on new buildings over 500 meters, citing safety, waste prevention, and curbing vain achievement symbols. But in 2025, as projects like Golden Finance 117 and Greenland Tower, 70 to 90% complete pre-2020, resume, observers see a controlled easing at play. Structures near completion before the ban may receive special permits to finish, provided they align with economic and property market recovery strategies. This isn't just a stopgap to clear unfinished legacies. It may be a springboard for a deeper strategy, launching City Branding 2.0. In the early 2000s, tens, cities like Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen rose with iconic towers like Shanghai Tower, Canton Tower, and Ping'an Finance Center. Since 2020, that momentum slowed under tight regulations. Now completing super talls like Golden Finance 117 isn't just fixing errors, but reactivating urban icons to compete globally in a new era. Each completed super tall isn't just hundreds of thousands of square meters in use, it's a media salvo for the city. 
In the global race for talent, investment, and tech, visual icons remain powerful. China, with its 15-year history of skyline building, seems poised to reclaim leadership. If these steps succeed, the world may soon see China's return to a race thought over, building the tallest, most distinctive, and meaningful structures. From a symbol of failed ambition, Golden Finance 117 could become a milestone in China's post-property crisis repositioning. But like its near 600-meter height, the story isn't just about scale, it's about the depth of the question. Is this a grand recovery or a final effort to patch a broken dream? Some Western experts see it as savvy PR, using architecture to restore image amid a property sector under pressure. Others are blunter. If China completes Golden Finance 117, it shows they retain the ability to organize, fund, and execute massive projects, something few economies in downturn can do. While the West focuses on essential infrastructure and debt control China, despite internal pressures, chose a forgotten tower as a revival symbol. This speaks to how they define confidence, not just in words, but in steel, glass, and hundreds of meters piercing the skyline. What do you think of this dramatic comeback? Comment and join the discussion on whether this tower, once forgotten by the world, can truly reach the sky again. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Top 10 Discoveries Official for sharp analysis, clear data, and global perspectives on shocking events and news. Top 10 Discoveries Official will return with more stunning breakthroughs, monumental projects, and untold stories from around the world. Goodbye and see you next time.